wonder what you think about polyamory as opposed to a committed, exclusive uh, relationship with nuclear family model. Because I feel like I want to be, like I never really uh, had a playful teenage life, so to speak, or mm -hmm. 20s, so I, maybe this guy lived it, but I feel I want to explore that, to be playful, so I'm not ready for like a serious uh, lifetime or whatever like that. Well, just before I, you know, comment on the whole polyamory thing, I just want to say that, you know, it's also a matter of age. Mm. So if one wants to have children, it's always better to have them younger. Yeah. So you also keep young and they keep you young and so on. If you have a child when you're 65 years old, it's a little different then you know what I mean, or 60 or 50 or so on. I don't know what your age is, but that is also something to take into consideration, I feel. From a spiritual point of view, the younger you have children, the, f the better the ego breaks down, because the children are also in that process of ego breaking down, which also helps you to connect with soul. I'm talking about, of course, this doesn't apply to everyone in the world, but it is something very advisable, actually. If there is any small calling in you to have a child, rather go for it than not go for it. I mean, of course, not if you don't have a woman at all, you don't have a child just with a tree, but I'm saying, you know, if there is a chance for that. As far as the, the issues of polyamory, I think increasingly society is opening itself to these possibilities everywhere in the world. There are societies that are actually, interestingly enough, quite polyamorous. I've always said that Indian society is polyamorous. So in the extended families, the larger families, unspoken of, of course, it's not paraded, you know, on, on the streets, but there has always been a form of polyamory present. It has been sort of almost an acceptable part of life. So in the, in the larger extended families, you know, brothers, sisters, wives, there are, like they say, for example, Sali Adi Gharwali, meaning your sister-in-law is half your wife, for example. These are old adages or that, that point to a polyamorous way of living in Indian society. Mm of course not flaunted mm. because human jealousy will always also be part of the mix. Having said that, you in the context in which you live and in, in the societies in which you live would have to face a lot of, um, lot of challenges in that area because jealousy is always something that emerges and however tuned in you are, with your soul, which leaves you a certain freedom to tune into the soul of others, you also have to take into account that the society in which you live is absolutely not geared for that even today and has a very strong resistance to those forms of, of coexistence. So, It's a difficult way to live, I feel, and the question is, why would you want to put yourself through that? Mm. You can also, for example, be with the same woman, and I'm not saying that from a moral standpoint, but just from a practical one, and imagine the different goddesses in her. That is also a possibility. Mm. That's what the shaktas do, mm. you know. That is how their relationship with their wives are. Traditionally, they were trained to see the goddess in the woman they are with. Now, that is a bit, of course, a bit challenging, but the question is that if you are out there to experience sexuality with different people, you are also out there absorbing energies of different people into your system and when you do that, it can corrupt the system. 
I don't mean corrupted in a, in a conceptual sense, but energetically. You can be... You can, it's also a dangerous game to play sometimes, because women are very, very powerful. When a woman curses a man, his... basically he's doomed. And it's also true. You'll see a lot of men, when men are not careful how they treat their women, they can be so badly impacted in their work, in their sense of worth, by a woman's silent curse, you know. It's not worth attracting that, it just simply isn't. And I tell this to the teenagers, 18, 20 year olds who come to me, I say, I know that you, ha you are in an experimental stage in your life, but ensure that when you're going into that lab, nothing is exploding in your face. Be very quiet about these things, because if women find out, they curse those men lifelong. The more good-looking a man is, the more women he has, the more cursed he is. So, you have to also understand that it's not just about fulfilling your desires, it is also about the impact your actions have on others. And what you invite in exchange, and remember, the female is a dangerous creature. Do not mess with her, she's dangerous. Keep her... keep her happy as much as you can, and step out of her way as much as you can. That is the advice. Thanks. <laughs> a jealousy of a woman. If men knew how women get jealous, they would never mess around with them. Or if they messed around, they would never let them find out. I have a... Uh, I've enjoyed some very in-depth discussions with female friends who maybe themselves naturally feel a little somewhat polyamorous. Yes. And how they experience it. It was very uh, healing to me, actually, to receive that sharing and... Uh, a different perspective from the type of woman who is very fixated on a, a nuclear family model. So there's also different varieties of orientations of women and so it'd be important to... I know people who live in or lived in uh, polyamorous groups and things like that and I've almost never seen it work. Mm. Because at one point what happens is one person enters into that group who is more desired than the others and then the mud fight starts. Mm -hmm. And it's most of the time between the women, not the men. So, if life is... if you are on a path of self-realization, Shiva, and I think you are, then it is about realizing self first, you know and experiencing sexuality in different ways and different colors and different flavors and so on is a hobby. It is not something which is going to conduct you to the Self and the knowledge of Self. Yeah. Once you have that... even... even... once you feel that thing, that, that, that soul presence, the, the need for a polyamorous experience will in of itself dissolve, because it's too... it's too challenging for a system in today's day and age to enter into those things, maybe as an experience, but then what happens? What if you get caught in that fight? Then what do you do? How do you extricate yourself from it? Mm. You know? It, finally, it's about realizing self, not about realizing different women. And if you realize self, then you will not have that problem at all, because that one woman that is meant for you will turn up. Mm -hmm. It's a million percent guarantee. But first you have to feel the Self. Mm -hmm. So, while I understand that you have desires, the question is, do you want to give in to the desires, or do you want to give in to first that process of realization, and keep the... Uh, keep the rest of it for when you're settled in Self. Mm -hmm. It's a safer path, I feel. Mm -hmm. And for women it's a much easier thing, because women are the ones that cause the problems in those configurations, not men. 
Men are simple creatures. Women are much, much more complex and much more dangerous. Mm. So look before you leap. Mm. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> and the best is not to leap. Not to leap. Mm. Take baby steps. On the topic of... Uh, I just have to see, Urshiva, uh, mm. if there's a hand up here, I think. There is one and there is two, so I have to take her first, mm. then him, and then can I have you come back after sure. that? Can I sit here? Yes, of course. You, you used to always sit right down in front of me before, yeah. always, and then you went very far away as the... Safe distance. Yes. <laughs> yes. But if at all I'm dangerous, it's only to your ego. 